In two previous videos, I took you through bracketing and then working with those produced images to create an HDR image in Photoshop. We used 16-bit mode. Now we will look at the 32-bit mode workflow. To get to this point of the process, please check out those previous videos. Now our image is ready for processing. Okay, here in 32-bit mode, it only allows you to set the white point preview. Depending on where you set the white point slider, the final image may look over or underexposed, but don't worry. Remember that your monitor can't accurately display an image with this much dynamic range, and that the floating point format preserves detail even in extremely bright and dark regions. Therefore, no matter where you place the slider, the file will still contain all the exposure data of all your photos once processed. So, you really don't have to do anything at this point, simply click OK, and it will create an HDR image we can work with. That will take a minute, so I'm going to jump ahead to that point. Here we are with our 32-bit HDR image. I know it doesn't look like much, but you have to remember that monitors today don't have the ability to display all of the information provided by a high dynamic range of information. Perhaps one day, but not today. Given that your monitor can't even display the whole range of the image, and you can bet your printer can't print it either, you may be wondering what you can do with a high dynamic range image. Well, choose to save it at this point, and Photoshop now lets you choose from a number of formats compatible with HDR images. Even Photoshop's own PSD format supports 32-bit images. Saving your image will take a bit of space, but may be worth it, so you don't have to go back to the sourced images later. Okay, to transform this into something more usable, go to the image menu, then down to mode, and you will see the option of 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit. Select 16 bits. Now we can begin to have some fun. In this window, we have all the same settings as before, however, as you start to tweak them, you will notice your image behave very differently, and the decisions you make to process your image will change as you now have access to a lot more information to manipulate. The HDR conversion dialog gives you four different ways to compress the dynamic range of your 32-bit image down into something that will fit into 16 bits. Depending on which one you select, you may be presented with additional controls. Okay, first let's look at exposure and gamma. This one gives you a slider for exposure and one for gamma, <laughs> like you'd expect. Much like the exposure adjustment, this conversion method lets you select the portion of the dynamic range you want to retain and the overall brightness of the resulting conversion. The controls function basically as brightness and contrast. Next, Highlight Compression will attempt to reduce contrast in the highlight portions of the image to get it to fit within a standard 16-bit space. It has no controls, functioning completely without user intervention. After that, we have the Equalize Histogram option. This one also has no user controls. It seems to compress the entire dynamic range inward to fit while trying to retain as much contrast as possible. And finally, Local Adaptation. This one is quite a bit more complicated. It tries to create local contrast throughout the image while stealing contrast from portions of the image that need it less. This is the most powerful method, but also the most frustrating since it can also produce some pretty abnormal results. At the top of the window, you have the option to utilize one of the presets as a starting point. And if you want, you can save or load your own presets by clicking on this icon just to the left of the drop-down menu. From here, the first thing you want to do is click on the option to show the toning curve in histogram here at the bottom. The toning curve here operates just like curves elsewhere in Photoshop, and serves to allow you to fully control how the extremely wide dynamic range of the source HDR image gets mapped to the output of the 16-bit image. Adjust the left hand end of the curve to affect your shadows. Try to make it match the beginning of the histogram. You probably won't need to, but if you do, do the same to the right hand side. This affects the highlights. Next, add additional points on the curve to manipulate your mid-range information until you get an acceptable preview image. After that, adjust the radius and threshold to fine-tune how local adaptation will create local contrast. After you have finished your adjustments, click OK and Photoshop will convert your 32-bit image to 16 bits. After converting it to a 16-bit image, you can use the full range of the normal optimization techniques to fine-tune your image. And when you finally save the file out, you should choose Save As, so not to replace your 32-bit file. In the next video, we will look at creating a panoramic. Until then, thank you for joining me. I'm Steven Streeter.